Uh, Shane, good morning to you. Thank you for joining us. Hey, greetings, folks. Greetings from Taranaki. All right. Um, no, take it. You're working there. You're looking at a project in Taranaki. Yeah, actually came to get a briefing as to how real is the prospect of New Zealand as our gas supplies diminish. Investment, as you know, has been weakened after Jacinda Ardern's uh, vanity-seeking moment, worst energy decision of my lifetime to cancel the ga uh, oil and gas industry. Now yeah. people are looking at importing gas from Australia. Mm. Okay. Let's then address this issue of the requirements for iwi consultation even under the fast track legislation. Would you agree that those provisions exist? Yeah, so inevitably there'll be some changes coming out of the select committee, but this is the situation that uh, we've inherited. The Crown over the years has uh, entered into a bunch of Treaty of Waitangi settlements and some of those settlements largely entered into by Christopher Finlayson and, and the John Key government gave uh, statutory recognition to iwi settlement entities that when developments take place or plans are passed, um, that they would have the right to be consulted. Uh, a lot of that uh, sadly uh, lies buried in these individual Treaty of Waitangi settlements and what we've been trying to do is work out how do we both recognise those legal rights but ensure that they don't turn into a situation of hostage politics. So you are saying the special consultation provisions that exist in this legislation uh, wouldn't be your first pick, but there are other statutory obligations on the government that mean if you didn't, you'd be in breach of the Treaty of Waitangi. Well, I'll just take one. It's called the Tore Whaimana, and it basically means an overarching law that was entered into between Michael Cullen and the Waikato tribe over the Waikato River. And um, quite frankly, that particular provision gives them the ability to engage and participate in plans pertaining to the Waikato River. We've got one or two options. Pretend that doesn't exist and no doubt feed a, a certain level of uh, festering resentment or blend it into a situation, but it has to be subservient to the purpose of the Act, which is to accelerate development. Uh, it could very well be an area that the uh, Select Committee uh, finesses. Uh, the reference to the Treaty of Waitangi, uh, our, our preference is to, as a New Zealand First, is to actually have nothing. But we're saddled by the fact that we're a whole host of existing Treaty of Waitangi settlements and um, if we pass legislation that pretends that they're not there, then that not only ref uh, undermines what the central government, the Crown, has already done in very, very recent history. Mm. So it's a matter of uh, how to blend it in, but to ensure that it okay. doesn't represent well, why the opportunity not? to constipate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, and look, I, I understand your, your explanation. It makes perfect sense in the context of... of what has been going on in this country for two or three decades, Shane. Um, and I guess this, interestingly in context, also explains why ACT um, are so keen to have this treaty principles debate. Um, why not rip the scab off, though, Shane? Why not say, let's deal with all these strange obligations that have been created with Waitangi settlement rulings or, or, or decisions, let's unpick... I mean, I mean, would you agree in fundamental terms that the special provisions that are currently in the Fast Track Bill give one group of New Zealanders more right to be involved in this process than others? And it's based on their race. <coughs> yeah, so uh, the other group that are demanding their rights be respected, which were included by David C uh, not C, but David Parker and his fast track um, half pie legislation were the green groups. They have statutory authority, and um, we've kept them out of it. And what we've basically so why can't you keep Iwi out of it too? Yeah, because uh, so you say you're pushing, you've got on, a, you're pushing on an open door with me. But the last time I checked, the Crown hadn't signed a full and final settlement with Greenpeace, <laughs> and. <laughs> You know, we, we've got one or two ways to go here. You, you, you can yeah, either... Yeah, but I don't uh, want you to deflect, Shane Jones. 
either we're going to address this issue at some stage in a wider context or we're not. And every time you pass a piece of legislation that further enshrines what many New Zealanders see as racist and ethno-state tending policies, uh, you perpetuate the problem. Yeah, so with the, with the fast-track legislation, we've inordinately reduced, substantially reduced all the detritus that uh, exists, and now we're down to the bare bones of it. What does a government do with the existence of these historic settlements that give a right to be consulted and engaged on planning? Now, what, what, are we, what are we to do? Sure, we can annihilate them and destroy them and pretend that the last 25 years of those settlements doesn't exist. But what was the point of entering into them, by the, by the way, largely carried out by right-wing governments, what was the point of entering into them if we weren't, over time, going to respect them or acknowledge them? Geez, that is quite a fundamental question. And that seems to me to be at the very heart of the debate this country is having now, whether Paddy Gower likes it or not, about these issues. I think what you're really saying is, okay, can we draw the curtain down um, on this epoch of our history and can you reduce the influence of those groups to weaponise those settlements and stop development unless they uh, receive some sort of payment to allow the development. Yeah, and, and let, let's be honest. Uh, let's be honest, Shane. The common perception, and not just amongst Pakeha or racists or any other group, amongst most people, is these sorts of consultation, particularly with Maori groups, and I know it is a racist and a prejudiced perception, is that consultation means you give them a backhander. Well, we have had occasions where that has played out in public. I mean, what other reason did Meridian Energy write a plus $100 million checkout for um, Ngaitahu yeah. and other stakeholders in the South Island? Why, why else did they do it? Yeah. yeah, I, yeah I'm no Bambi on these issues, but you know, I'd say to your listeners, okay, we've inherited a situation. And I have to tell you, the National Party and the ACT Party the Labour Party and New Zealand First in the past have, have all voted for these settlements. Mm. 